Hello, welcome to Do-It-Yourself with Wayne. Today, we're going to be demonstrating how to use this JB Weld Plastic Bond. Uh, it's an epoxy product made by JB Weld. Uh, JB Weld is famous for their different types of epoxies, and they typically give you a very strong bond. Uh, but this is the plastic bond uh, formulation, which is obviously is formulated more for plastics, although you can use it for other things. Um, but we have this piece of plastic here that's broken. Um, it came out of a Risograph MZ790. Not that anybody in my audience is going to have a Risograph MZ790, or at least, at least it would be very unlikely. Uh, but it gives us an example of a piece of plastic that's broken that needs to be repaired. So that's what we're going to be working on today, uh, fixing this broken part for my printer. And over here we've got a bunch of clamps. Um, don't really know exactly which ones or how many we'll be using, but we'll be using some clamps to hold these parts you know, snugly together while the glue sets. Uh, it sets in about 15 minutes, uh, cures a little better in 30 minutes, but you know, generally for epoxies, if you let them set overnight, they really cure good. Uh, so you should think about that if you use epoxies. Give them plenty of time to set, even though they may, may cure in 5 minutes or 15 minutes or whatever. Give them plenty of time before you actually put them to work. But anyway, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to use this JB Weld Plastic Bond. We're going to fix this plastic part that is, goes in our printer. And if all goes well, we'll show you our printer in operation at the end of the video. Now here we are with a close-up view of our JB Weld still in the package. We're going to take it out of the package now. Uh, I'm just serious about this. package does come with a little stick for mixing, but we're going to use our own uh, measure, our mixing stick. Um, here it is. Uh, it's got a nice little seal on the end. You twist it and that'll come off. Sometimes like this, a little bit of glue will squirt out when that happens. Always make sure you got some paper towels or something handy when you're doing this, just so you can clean stuff like that up. And also, you may notice I got a piece of paper here on top of my table. Uh, always put down something that you can throw away when you're done. Just to make sure that if you spill a little bit of glue, and you know, glue does get spilled, that you can you know, just throw that away instead of worrying about trying to clean your table up. But anyway, that's where we're at. We're getting ready to uh, show mixing this up. Now before we start, I'm going to show you what I've already done. I removed this part from my printer. As you can see, it's got a, a long crack right here. It's cracked around here and up through here. Uh, so we're going to be putting glue in this crack here. There's also a crack on the back side we're going to be putting glue in. Uh, inside the edges here and down through here. Now, after I took this out of my printer, I took care to clean all the old uh, ink off of it. It was, had quite a bit of black ink on it. You may still see some on my hands. Uh, and we also took alcohol and cleaned those edges really good. Just to make sure they're good and clean before we start applying this epoxy, uh, this JB Weld Plastic Bonder, uh, to the part to be repaired. So that's where we're at at this point. Uh, we've removed our part from the printer. We've identified what's broken. We've cleaned it thoroughly and prepared it for the glue. And now we're ready to start mixing our JB Weld to put it on there and, and repair this part. I would recommend that you get another piece of something disposable. Uh, we're using a piece of cardboard to mix your JB Weld on. Um, so we're just going to take our syringe and we're just going to put some on here. We're going to use a generous amount. We don't know how much we're really going to need. And your, uh, your top will go back on here. Probably a good idea to make sure you put it on the same way it came off. Just to make sure you don't set something up in there by mistake. Now we're going to mix this. Uh, when you're mixing epoxies, be careful that you do a good job. Um, get the edges real good. Make sure you do a good job of mixing it up. You got 15 minutes to work with this particular epoxy. 
different epoxies will have different times uh, that you can work with it. Some will set in as little as a couple of minutes. Um, this says is um, you got about 15 minutes to work with it, and then it sets in 30 minutes. But as I said earlier, it's good to give it plenty of time to set, just to give it plenty of time to do what it's going to do, and uh, give you give you a good bond for whatever you're working on. All right, that should be mixed up good enough. Now we're going to start applying it to our broken part. I'm going to start out with this crack here. We'll get some liberal amount on there. And we'll go down in here. And we'll make sure I get a little on both sides. Okay. I want to get in there as best I can in that crack. Now here at the end, I won't be able to get in there as well, but I'll do what I can to get epoxy down in the groove where the crack is at. And up in here, I can get it in there better. But I want to make sure that I get glue on the edges of the part that's broken. Um, just so it can start soaking into that plastic and getting a good bond before I actually press the pieces together. Now I'm going to do the other side the same way. Just working that epoxy in there. Getting it on the edges, not just on the top, but on the edges of the broken part. I want to get a good coating on there. Uh, and now one of my other printers has decided to start running. It'll cut off here in a minute. Alright, that should be good enough there. Now I'm going to work on this edge here. Get both sides of it. And there my other printer cut off so you can hear me a little bit better. If you hadn't figured out by now, i got a small print shop, so uh, there's always printers of some sort down here giving some kind of problem. So it gives me a lot of opportunity to fix things. So uh, I service everything in this shop except for one big color laser printer. Um, so I've got a lot of experience on fixing things. All right, now we're going to push these parts together. You'll see a lot of glue squeezing out. We'll wipe some of that off. Because that, that just builds up on the edge isn't really going to help us that much. We want to glue this down in there in the crack itself. That's the glue that's really going to help us. All right, got that part. Now I'm going to do the same thing here. Get some of that excess glue off. I don't know if you can tell, but I can. This is already starting to set up a little bit. It's still pliable and workable, but it's not as thin and runny as it was when I first started. Because that chemical reaction of the epoxy is you know, it's starting to set up. And it will continue that process. All right. That should do that. Now we're going to put some clamps on here to hold this thing together. I think one right there would be good. And I'll hold that. I'll take another one of these small ones and put it here to hold that together. And I think that's going to give me a, a good enough hold to keep everything held together until it sets. And uh, I don't know if you can tell it, but I got an old crack over here that I fixed years ago. Since I got some epoxy left, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit on top of that. Um, kind of hard to get it down in, the, in that little hole, but I'm going to put some on there. Just because I've got some. Sometimes when you're doing parts like this you have to be careful too 
um, sometimes how much weight you've got on a part like this can affect how it works. Um, so you have to be careful about that as well. You don't want to add too much glue that adds a lot of weight. Uh, right along here, the paper slides there. So I don't want, when I get through and this sets up, I'll, I'll sand that down some so that it's smooth again. Because I don't want it rough where the paper will catch on it. Now I messed around and knocked my clamps off. i got to put them back on here now. Well, this is trying to be a little ornery. There we go. Put this one back on here. And that should have everything glued together and set. Waiting for this thing to cure. Um, the glue that we have left, we'll just, it'll just harden up and we'll throw it away. When you use epoxy, always try to mix up a little more than you think you'll need. Because you've got a certain amount of time to work with this stuff. And um, when, you, when you get through, if you don't have enough, it's hard to mix up a little bit more to continue what you're doing. So it's better to have extra and throw some away than to run out. Because if you run out and you don't have everything glued together, like if you're looking at my piece here, there's a lot of pieces in there that need to be glued. If I didn't have enough mixed up, I can't set and clamp the ones that I got glue on and then come back later and do the ones I don't have glue on. Um, so think about that before you start. Always make sure you mix up a little more epoxy than you need just to make sure you got enough to do the job. Now here we are. We, I've waited till the next day to finish this up. And uh, I've used my Dremel tool. I've used some sandpaper. I've smoothed all this up. Because paper runs across this, it needs to be good and smooth. Um, it's not shiny like it used to be. Uh, but it's smooth enough that the paper is not going to catch on anything. So that's our fix. As you can see, we've got glue down in here. And uh, looks like we've got a good quality fix here with this JB Weld plastic bonder. Uh, so now we're going to put this part back in our printer and see if it works. Now we've got our part installed back in our printer. I'm going to show you how it works. Working great. fix with the JB Weld plastic bonder on this plastic part in this Aristograph MZ790 has worked great. It's functioning just like it's supposed to. And uh, we'd just like to thank you for visiting Do It Yourself with Wayne. If you find this video helpful or interesting, please click like. And uh, if you subscribe to our channel to help you find more of our Do It Yourself videos in the future. And um, again, just thank you for visiting Do It Yourself with Wayne. We hope you have a great day.